Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the new episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 17. Let's get right into it. Wow, you guys, this was actually a very good episode in the sense that it had a lot of good things in it. It had personal storylines, it had drama, it had group scenes, and I feel like it's a shame that they finally showed a good episode after all these weeks and it's about to be over. But let's start because this episode starts with Wendy was making a phone call, Karen was at the doctor's, and he tells her that everything is looking great, she is fine as far as her health, so that's really good. We see Ashley and Giselle, they're really excited about their new clothing brand. And then this was interesting. So we see a scene with Neca and Ike going to the doctor because they're going through this IUI thing where they're going to inseminate Neca. So the first step is to get the sperm. So Neca and Ike go to the restroom to, you know, get that resource so that was interesting and then we see the doctor come and they actually showed the entire procedure how they inseminated the sperm into NECA and then hopefully this will result in a baby so it's kind of cool in a way that they documented this and I really do wish them the best and it got me thinking NECA could be technically she could be on married to medicine you know she's married to Ike so again hoping for the best moving on another couple scene this one is between Gordon and Mia and it's a therapy scene he says that he never brought up the the divorce the word or the idea of divorce ever Mia did so Mia explains that she doesn't want to live a combative life in her confessional Mia tells us that the first time she ever mentioned the word divorce to him he went and emptied up her bank account oh Gordon said nope not today in the words of J-Hud insufficient funds you ain't got no money so they are that's crazy. Can y'all believe that Gordon did that? What? So they talk about intimacy as well. It it looks like it's not the best right now. Mia wishes that he could be a little bit more romantic, more loving during the act. The, the therapist then tells him to hold hands and make eye contact with each other and say what they want from one another. So Gordon says that he wants to be, he says to Mia, I want you to make me feel like I'm not an afterthought. Make time for me. Listen to me. Mia just nods, but it doesn't look good. She actually didn't even say anything. I don't know if she said it, but they didn't show what she wanted from him. But listen, I think that it's hard to build a foundation when a relationship begins as a transactional relationship. Because this is what that was, you know. So and from as an outside perspective, just looking at the scene, it doesn't look good. So then the next scene is another therapy scene. Lord have mercy, the therapists were therapisting this episode. So... Dr. Ken goes to Candace's house, and if I'm not mistaken, isn't he the guy who was counseling Drew and Ralph? So Candace tells him that recently she's had a conversation with Chris about the embryos that they have and how it keeps getting pushed back with the little, um, the mammogram scare that she had and then having, you know, going on tour with her music career. So she's wondering if she's pushing motherhood away. So he asks, what do you want? And she's in tears and says, I want a baby. And my heart broke for Candace and I truly hope that she can have a baby. Her and Eka, it would be amazing if they got pregnant at the same time. The next scene is a group scene with Wendy, Candace, Karen, Mia, Ashley, Robin, and Giselle. So Mia invited them. She talked to a man named Will Walters, who does some magazine, I think it's called Monarch, and he wants to highlight the women of color of Potomac. But y'all, Mia, because I was wondering, well, where is Neca? She's the only one missing. Well, Mia had sat down with her before this to tell her that she's not invited because she's new to the group and the people don't know her yet. Eh, it's kind of rude in my opinion. I mean, it's true she's new, but I'm just saying that would hurt my feelings if they said that to me just personally. So the man comes out and basically what they're going to do is that they're going to do like a cosplay of famous celebrities. So Candace will be dressing up as Diana Ross. Giselle will be Beyonce. Ashley will be Dorothy Dandridge. Mia is Pam Greer. Karen is Leah Horn. And Wendy is Cheryl Lee Ralph. Oh, and Robin is Mariah Carey. So... 
They're going to be dressing up and they're going to be taking a photo shoot and we're going to see those photos later. Okay, so then we see Robin. She is going into a new business venture. She's opening up a Glow 30, which is like a franchise business. It's a place where they do facials and spot treatments. So her and Juan go to a location that they're hoping will serve. It will be around $69,000 a year for this place, which is not terrible. Robin is excited and so is Juan. I mean, obviously, right? They need the money. And this is one of the few times where Robin and Juan actually seem to get along. Also, Robin calls Giselle because her dad was not doing well at this time. He had brain cancer and we know that he passed away not long after filming Wrapped, but it was very sad because Giselle loves her dad and she, when um, Robin calls Giselle on the phone, Giselle definitely sounded very sad. We then see Wendy a little behind the scenes of her show and she had a really good lineup for this episode that she shot. She had April Ryan, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand, and Lindsay Granger, who I love. She was actually on The View quite a few times. Now, I will say this show that they recorded, it looked great. I'll admit it because a lot of these women have very interesting perspectives and a lot of knowledge. So it looked like they were having great conversations. My question is, when is this episode going to come out? Because this was filmed a long time ago. I want to watch it. It is then the day for Ashley and Giselle's GNA event. Giselle is trying to put on a brave face. She's really sad about her dad. So we see them get ready and then it is time for the show. So people start coming in. Karen is the first one. She and Giselle did talk a little. She could tell that Giselle's very sad. Wendy did say congratulations to Giselle. That was nice that they at least spoke. Uh, the whole cast was there, including Cherise, Jacqueline, Ashley's mom. And then Sesame Street got there. Deborah. Now, this little girl was walking around like she owned the damn place, hugging everyone, acting as if everything was normal. She also hugged Wendy, which was kind of surprising. Then Kriana made it. So then they began the fashion show. Now, this was a mess. This made She by Charade look like it was uh, Milan, Italy, and they had some Louis Vuitton or Gucci show because. It, lo it was not that great. Wendy, Candace, and Kiana, they shaded the whole thing, honey, because, again, it was not that good. Now, the event itself was nice. I did like the venue. I liked the drinks, the food. The, the vibe was there, but the fashions, uh, not so much. To end it, Giselle and Ashley come out. They thank everyone, and Giselle thanks everyone and says that she has... This has been one of the hardest weeks of her life, but she thanks Ashley for really stepping up and lifting her up in this event. So after that, Mia tells the group that Giselle is going through a lot. Her dad is going into surgery the next day, and they need to be there for her. <sighs> now this I don't like. So Candace made some comment about, oh, well, I wish him well. That's pretty much it. But then Wendy says, well... My mother was in surgery, and y'all were dragging me, so that's all I have to say. I, uh, listen, I think it's pretty disgusting coming from the Catholic woman that she's trying to convince us that she is all the damn time. To compare a man dying of brain cancer to her mom who was at the hospital allegedly over some elective surgery, it's despicable. It's so unbecoming. Honestly, shame on her. I can't believe I ever defended her. Shame on her. It's, it's, wow. I, I'm speechless. That comment was unbelievable. But then to end the night, they were dancing a little. The cameras were down, but the mics were still on and they caught the fight. Deborah was starting some stuff. Kriana was serving as Candace's bodyguard. But we didn't see anything, child. Just the audio. And then it said to be continued. They literally teased this to show nothing, just like three seconds of an audio. I mean, we already saw the fight on TMZ, but still, I was expecting just a, maybe a little bit more, but nothing. That's how the episode ended. Next week is the finale. But yeah, you guys, I like this episode because of the personal storyline. So we had Nika, you know, with her baby journey, as well as Candace, Robin, her new business venture, Giselle, the unfortunate events of her father, uh, Mia doing this photo shoot, the girls doing the launch. It was honestly a pretty... Uh, a, a good episode with substance, I think is the best way to say it. But yeah, y'all, let me know what were your thoughts about the episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a great one. Bye.